I was driving down uh, from up north where I was getting in some last end of the season hunting and I stopped off at the old homestead where I grew up. It's a nice day, I guess it's snowing. But this is where I grew up as a child. My father and my uncle built the house together and I later added the barn. And when I was a kid, this is where the animals lived. The goats, a few random ducks, that sort of thing. Epiphany is a story about people going on a journey. And it's quite clear that they don't know exactly what they're going to find. They have enough courage, I suppose, those early Zoroastrian adventurers, to head into a strange land. They don't know exactly what they'll find, but they feel called. When I think about my sense of call, I reflect on how much time I spent back in these woods growing up. Every day, every single day in the summer, I would uh, come out here without fail and do what I did. Which is what every country kid knows how to do. You flip over logs, you look for salamanders and snakes, pickerel frogs, and the big bullfrogs that we used to carry around in our coat pockets, used to scare our little sisters and teachers. To get back here when I was a child was a chore. It was very heavy swamp and very few paths. This year, my wonderful parents built this new path to allow us to get easier access to what they call affectionately the back 40. The back 40 was always my secret hideout. It was a place I could go that grown-ups couldn't get to. I remember this sense of wonder, appreciation for nature. But I also remember that I didn't know what I was looking for when I went into the woods. Sometimes you'd find something wild, you know? An old Indian arrowhead, or some kind of new kind of snake, or an animal, or something like that. But as a kid, I didn't have to have a goal in mind when I was heading out here. I could just come out here and explore with this sort of wildly open mind that children have. Well, kids know how to do this. And I think that we have sometimes get older, we don't take action. We don't know what the outcome is going to be. But anyone who's worked in ministry can tell you that ministry is a process of following God. And you're not sure what the destination is going to be. I think it's really hard to cultivate comfort with that idea of not knowing what the destination is going to look like. I don't think that the Magi expected to find the Son of God in an animal stall. I don't think that they expected to be warned by angels in a dream about this false-hearted King Herod. I think that what they did was they just simply sought. They sought amongst the shadowy time of Epiphany. This season where light is coming back into the world, but it's cold. I don't know what is going to happen over the course of the next year. I know that there's probably going to be a lot of sermons preached today about hope and about how well, things at least can't get any worse, right? I don't know if that's the attitude that I want to bring into this season of Epiphany. I think that what what is going to get me through this year and this time is just a reminder that that seeking after God is so much more fulfilling than simply deciding what you want the end goal to be. Now, Pastor Sarah and I can tell you that we've had lots of different ideas for ministries in the church. We try them all, and I think about maybe one in every four ends up meeting with any success. We've tried to take trips together that haven't panned out. We've attempted to do mission work, and nobody shows up. These are okay things. Any, any minister worth their salt will tell you that if you expect every single ministry comes into your heart to be a success, you're going to be disappointed. And then, because we keep this sense of call and purpose, this idea of following God, 
we end up seeing amazing things. And so rather than dwelling on the disappointment or the uncertainty of what we're going to find at the end of our destination, we get to manifest the joy of being surprised when things actually do work out. Now, sometimes when I'm at my most cynical, I'm fond of saying stuff like, you know, don't count your chickens before they're hatched and, you know, I'll believe it when I see it and this sort of thing. But at the bottom of that is an honest to God understanding that if we're faithful, even if we don't know what we're going to find at the end of our epiphany journey with any certainty, we can still know that we're going to see amazing things. When I was a kid, I'd come out here and I would find just unbelievable miracles, quiet things, a, a little artesian well that had fish at the bottom of it, or a baby deer, or you would just never know. But you had to seek. You had to seek and you had to have some measure of belief that you would find something incredible without knowing what it was. I think that um, what I learned from Epiphany and from the journey of the Magi is that we have to trust that God is going to show us something amazing, even if we don't know what it's going to be. In this new year, let's lean into that trust, I think. Let's lean into the belief that God is, in fact, going to show us miracles, even if we don't know what they're going to be, but that the journey is one toward goodness and light, toward abundance and holy security. We rest in God's trusting arms and believe that God is indeed quite faithful to us. Well, I didn't know if I was going to see any animals when I came out here, but it is absolutely beautiful right now. There's nowhere else in the world I'd rather be, even though I didn't come out here with any purpose other than to just take some time and talk with you. Kim Folk, Happy New Year. Happy Epiphany. Seek the light, even if you're not certain of the destination. Amen.